Rebo, you dropped the wand in the hand. That's the way. Okay, Lee, watch. Oh, three moves. But three of them, no one has ever done three balloons. Nobody in the world has ever done three balloons. So look at this. Look at this. Huh? 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 How about that, Harry? The wind didn't even... Then I clap my hand three times. One, two, three. Open it up. And sure enough, there she is right side out. Let her out. Bill Bergeron has been entertaining audiences since the age of 14 with inventiveness and wit that are uniquely his own. His characters are timeless from Rebo the Clown to the Carpetbagger. He has traveled the world spreading magic and humor and inspiring others to create and entertain. Bev has been honored for his contributions many times, including being elected into the SAM Hall of Fame in 1992 and receiving the Lifetime Achievement Fellowship Award from the Academy of Magic Arts and Sciences. He has worked on hundreds of TV shows and commercials, and throughout it all, Bev Bergeron has been faced time and again with having to do the impossible, a task he has constantly accomplished for over 50 years. Magician, comedian, inventor, author. Bev Bergeron is many things, but above all, he is one of a kind. Bev, I understand that you started performing professionally around 14 years old. Is that right? Yes. Uh, for, I was a full-time professional. 14? I mean, 14. I was making money. Wow. Yeah, right. And uh, it, it, it's, it's a strange situation. It was a junior high school um, teacher, uh, I mean principal, I was, I was doing shows at the high school for nothing and the uh, principal of the school uh, required, wanted to know why I was taking off so much. So uh, my mother was out in the car waiting to drive me over to the high school to do a show and he said, you can't go to that show, I can't let you go. And I went, Ugh. He said, until you agree to do a show at our, our uh, junior high school. So I said, okay, and this is, I was in ninth grade and uh, I said, but I can't do a, a you know a 45 minute show. And he said, well, we'll get the science teacher to help you. And I was already into science magic. I had a big chemistry lab in my house. <laughs> what town was this? Uh, Baytown, Texas, by uh, by Houston. Okay. And uh, so we were all being groomed to be little chemical Scientists, geniuses, you know. Right. And, and I was doing chemical magic, you know, with my little Gilbert chemistry set. You know, the water changes the black, and black changes the ink and back again and back and forth and yet you used to still water and cold weather oh, and you know, yeah. all, like, it was all temperature stuff. Anyway, uh, I did this show at the junior high school and I got paid. Principal gave me like ten dollars, fifteen dollars. He says, you're gonna get paid. He said, by the way, what do they pay you for this thing? I said, no, but they don't get paid, sir. He said, from now on you're getting paid. And so, and from and that time you were Yes, sir, and uh, Mr. Stewart, and he, he called around and got me booked at other schools, elementary schools well, and things that's around. Great. So I started going around, and I'm making, you know, $15, $25 a show. And, and back in those days, our clerk made like $17 a week. My dad made 50 bucks a week. Yes, and, and he was making good days. money. Yeah. Yes, my father was making $5 a day, and they thought he was a millionaire. How long have you had, or how, when did you start having this interest in Well, when I, when I saw Willard the Wizard, and, and uh, also... Uh, I, w I was just fascinated that my father was all f also volunteer fire chief in my hometown and I got to sit there for two weeks in a row to watch this great show be unfold before me and since they were repeating you know on some of the nights I got to see uh, things extra and they'd put the girl up in the uh, uh, you know shot her from the cannon up to the nest of boxes and man I'd position myself early before anybody else got in, a, in the uh, tent, big tent theater and, and I'm by that pole and I'm holding on to that pole and they're going to slip that girl up in that nest of boxes and uh, so uh, later on they, they, our, our little neighborhood gang of kids, we call it the Bullseye Club, much like the Our Gang Kids, in right. fact we modeled it after the Our Gang Kids, 
we were out raising, you know, uh, money to fight the war and all that kind of stuff. We started doing shows, magic shows. We were doing the Okido chair with, uh, 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 without us knowing we did it. Really? Uh, yeah, it was, we'd slip, we'd sit in a chair, we'd cover ourselves up. I'd slip out the back door of the garage where we had the theater. <laughs> Diddy Craig would just drop, hold it up there, and then whip it away and say I was gone. We didn't have the gimmicks right, to right, make it look right. like I was sitting there. But and then we did. You would the, enter in the back? Yes, I'd run around back. Now that's before we knew it doing because Willard did the Azra, and we think, you know, we were going to figure out some way to do it. <laughs> and he, he just oh, held a sheet God. up. I was sitting in a chair. So, so we, you, were, we were way ahead of ourselves. But at some time, you ended up going with the Willard show, is yes, that right? Yes, that was when I was 16, 17, right in there, yeah. I, wow. I, my parents always let me go to these things if I'd come back to school without any trouble. This, is, I, that, yes. this is the book that you're telling yeah, me talking right. about, right? Yes. yes. Willard the book. Willard the Wizard. Willard the, Willard the yeah, Wizard. Yeah, the Smithsonian and used this for the... That's for the, what I understand. Yeah. They used it to research Their tribute, A tribute to the American Tent Theater. I was wow. uh, Jay Marshall put them on to me. And said it was the only book on on that of the history of the tent theaters in which uh, had drawings and stuff showing how it was laid out mm -hmm. with the, the stuff and all. So I was very proud of that. How long did you travel with uh, the Willard Show? Well, that was only that that summer and and uh, up until uh, I went back to school. But I booked them in my hometown, so I was with them every night. Then I booked them all around the area. I, I booked the show. You're Here I am going around as a 16, 17 year old kid right in there that, that, booking the, the shows. And uh, it was it was comical, uh, you know. That I'm walking in, and you know the guts I had. I can't even book myself that way. <laughs> <laughs> I understand though. You say that you were booking him around. You couldn't mm -hmm. book yourself. Well, then who booked you in the? Let me see. Twenty thousand well, shows. Oh that well, that was performed? yes. I have no idea how many shows I performed. Well, to be honest with you, probably yeah. more than that. If oh, I, oh if Lord, yeah, be more than that. That's how many when I was with Disney. Around twenty-five thousand during that period of time. Well, you did time. five a day for yeah. Disney. We're doing five a day for how and, many and, years? Uh, for uh, sixteen years almost. Yeah. Oh my and, god! Because uh, I worked at Disneyland and I worked here, and um, in Florida at, at Disney World. You worked in both and, uh, uh, California yeah. Disney mm -hmm. and, and Florida yeah. Disney. So uh, I only did a short period over there because Wally Wally Bogue, who was my idol, who uh, I saw him, you know, in fifty-eight. At uh, Disneyland with the diamond, uh, the golden horseshoe. There, he created that whole thing. He and Walt. Oh, it was a great show. Yeah. I've got it on DVD. Ooh, if you, good, you, good. You can pick that up if you're alone. Can we can we show a clip of that? Yes, you can. Yes. Can that be hey, So you were 15 years at uh, at Disney, mm -hmm. but then you were like 112 years at the uh, Magic yes. Alakazam, or yes, something, right? Yeah, that started in '57. Uh, Walter Blaney talked. Uh, Zany Blaney. Zany Blaney talked. Uh, uh, um, Mark Wilson. Mark Wilson says, "I need somebody that that can handle some business for me." And he says, "Bet Bergeron's your man." And I was working for an ad agency in Houston, and got. I went back from the service. I went and got my degree. And uh, so Mark asked me to come in and handle the business for the state fair, and I went in and, and, and set the stuff up for the state fair, and, and uh, that was in '57. And we had Tom Palmer was supposed to be building some special illusions. Okay. And so uh, the phone rings, says you got to get in there a lot faster. He says because Tom is not getting the stuff out fast enough. So I get there and I'm and I'm sleeping on Tom's uh, Palmer's uh, couch, 
and we're putting stuff together like mad. <laughs> this was to meet uh, TV dates. No, no, we this wasn't television. This is uh, the State Fair of Texas. Oh, okay. We had uh, Frito. Uh, no, uh, Frito. We had, yeah, Frito Lay was. Uh, no, it no, wasn't Frito Lay. There was Fritos, uh, Dr Pepper, Newhoff Meats, and Imperial Sugar as the four sponsors, and they were represented in, in uh, fake little circus wagons. Clever. It was clever. Mark always got good people to design good stuff, and he designed four wagons. A circus wagon type with with a display in each one of them okay. of their products. We had a nice stage, real good stage, and uh, uh, we did five shows a day in in, in the uh, industrial building there. Was it your own stage? I mean, mm -hmm. did Tom yeah. or somebody yeah. build it for no, you? That, no, that was well. No, I mean Mark had uh, uh, a stage people come in and build a stage. A traveling stage, but but it, but it was ours. I mean, it was. Uh, oh yeah, it was Mark. Yeah, right. yeah. Did it have traps yes. or anything in it? No, no, no. We we did the next year. We did hook up a. Uh, Broom suspension into into it, so okay. we didn't have to put a platform. Just worked the, right, the right. thing, and uh, but uh, it was it was a terrific little show. I mean, I'm, Mark should be very proud of it. We had a substitution. He disappeared on the stage and appeared on a ladder, re fixing a light bulb up in the middle <laughs> of, the, of the audience, and and uh, and you learned that from the Willard show with oh, the yes. girl up there yes. in the um learn I learned I learned how she got in that box. <laughs> This is where I made a mistake, you see. Mark turned to me and he said, before we got open, and I'm, and I'm getting everything set up, and, and Tom and I are put running the illusion over. I was working night and day to finish these illusions. Then Tom makes a gorilla suit. I said, how are we going to do this? We've got to get the material sewn. And we, we went to the uh, Salvation Army and got all these fur coats, which you could get in those days. <laughs> Cut them up. We're going to... And I said, no, he said, no, we're going to use Elmer's glue. I never heard of Elmer's glue. See, we're going to glue them on this jumpsuit. Okay. So now we run out of Elmer's glue at 1 o'clock in the morning. And he said, don't worry, there's an all-night drugstore on the other side of town. So I drive like mad. This is in Dallas, Texas, the, the, the place to buy Elmer's glue. And I get there, and there's a sign on the door. We're open 365 days a year, 664 days a year. Happy, we're going to close one day a, a, a year. Happy Hanukkah. <laughs> oh, oh, boy. So, so we had to delay getting. Now, we finally get all the fur glued on the suit, right? Yeah. Guess what happened when that stuff gets hard? <laughs> it doesn't bend. Oh, that's right. <laughs> the only way we could get Mark in a gorilla suit was like lowering him into a suit of armor. <laughs> oh, that's Oh, that's funny. God, was that funny. Jeez. Lord. Uh, so we got him on there. We got, I don't know how we ever did it, but the show was a huge success. No, right before showtime, he says, oh, Bev, he says, we're in trouble. Get this. We are in trouble. What you mean, we? That's what I should have said. What do you mean, We. He says, uh, I sold them a clown, and we're, we are out of money, and we, we will be sued if, if you don't do the clown. I says, I'm through with that. I don't do clowning. I don't perform anymore. I'm management. <coughs> <laughs> well, I did a limited makeup on it, and that's where Rebo was created from there on out. Everybody says, oh, you got to Mark, you and, and Bev work great with this. This is terrific, man. And, uh, all the guys in Dallas were coming over, and the guys from Houston driving up and saying, "Mark, you got to." And so the, Rebo, and that's where Mark, Nani, and Rebo was from. Right. And then you went on to uh, television yeah. fame with 40, that. Yeah, uh, fifty-nine. Uh, get a call. Mark says, uh, "We got sponsored. Can you get into Dallas? We're going to shoot a thing called Magic Circus." All right. Now this is before the colored one, which came ten years right. later, actually eleven or twelve years later. We, we, we shot the show. Andy Sedaris was a director. He and I set the lights. I ran one of the cameras sometime. Uh, we had three cameras, but uh, and back in those days, if you couldn't edit the film the way we do, the, I mean, the tape the way we do. You remember the tape was that yes, thick. Yes, yes, I huge, remember. Huge, big reels. So, so, uh, every, so you did this weekly. Right? Yes, I mean, right, show right. every week. Right, we shot, well, we were shooting like two a week uh, in order to catch up, you know, on this little syndicated thing. We only put like 13 of them together and, and because it was testing it. Yes. We were the first show ever videotaped and nationally syndicated. And they were doing it, you know, saying uh, if, if you buy a machine from us, a tape machine, we will sponsor the show in your area. How long of a show was that? Half hour. Half hour. Yeah. How how did you do it? I can remember when I was young, I yeah. did a show every Friday, yeah. 15 minutes. Yeah. How did you do, how did you we, come up with all that uh, stuff? I went home and started 
piling illusions in the trunk of my car and drove them back. Uh, Mark, uh, Andy Sedaris, and myself learned so much stuff. Thank God we got to review a lot of these tapes, you know, and I'm going, you see how bad that is? And I'm pointing this out. You learn. That we, that's what's so great with videotape. We learned. So, so learning to do things like that, thinking on your feet, thinking at the last mm -hmm. minute, this was kind of the source of the... Uh, I have to say this, Bev, because yeah. uh, there's, it's, it's a joke in the, in the fraternity yeah. magicians. Bev Bergeron invented everything. Yeah, right. Okay. No, and, yeah. <laughs> and the reason you did was because we you had to. Had to. Had to. Had to. Had yeah. to. We had to adapt. We had to take old illusions and change them. We had to do all this. We had to figure out a way to do this stuff. I remember we talked earlier about the, the book. Yeah, the and, hot and book. you told yeah. me that you really didn't invent that all the way. No, you no. The idea, it. The, our idea is improve it. Yes. So how how did yeah. that come about? Well, uh, 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 Billy McCone put it in his book, the best book of William, something like that, uh, back in down by forty seven or something like that. I had a little pamphlet, and it in it it opens up. It's a hot book, but it's used with chemicals. Well. I wanted one. I couldn't get it. I tried everything. Joe Berg had one, and, and I had one once. Joe Berg had one left. He wouldn't let me have it. And and uh, Joe uh, said, no. He says he's written it to the studios. Well, I had to come up with, with a better one. So in the early 60s, I came out with just putting a cigarette lighter in a, in a book, cut and thing out, and flames come up. And two uh, guys at a magic meeting went and picked the thing off the table after I'd done it mm -hmm. and said that uh, they were going to use it at the castle. Uh, the castle just opened up about that time and was just getting going. And uh, Joe Berg walks over to me and says, are you going to sell me some of those? I says, Joe, come on, you know how many years I've been trying to get you to sell me the big one? I mean, now I've got one that works for me, leave me alone. He says, you're going to give it to them exclusively? They're going to rip it off. He says, go listen to what they're saying. I went over and I heard what they said. They were going to steal it. Openly, they were talking right there in front of me. So I said, Joe, uh, what can we get for him? He says, seven fifty dollars apiece. This is about 1965. I said, okay, I'll have a dozen for you next week. So he walks over, grabs the thing from, uh, from the two guys and said, uh, gentlemen, I own the rights to the book now. You have to deal with me. He took it away from him, handed it back to me. That's why I love Joe Berg. Joe Berg was a, like a father to me with magic. Loved him. Talking but, to you, talking to you is like surfing the internet every time you go into one <laughs> yeah, little place you got to yeah, go to someplace awful? else like we were just talking uh, you were s talking a second ago and you said in magic castle and i said yeah magic castle yeah weren't you one of the original people right i was now that? i was the first one to join really yeah, i was the first one billy uh, 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 uh bill larson said bear bird Ron was the first one but they did they only gave me member number 10 though because they needed the first nine numbers for for the board of directors oh. and and, and uh, i remember reading someplace that you were interested in uh silkini's spook show Did oh that, yes tell oh, me about God. that that's, that was back the days with, with willard and all and, and, and the spook shows come in you know about 1946 right after the war see and i took a show out called Illumina fiend in 1950 and, and i had 100, 100 something theaters booked but i couldn't i got pulled into the service and uh, I had to drop it, you know, and, and so I only worked a few of them. But uh, Illum the Fiend, that was given to me by a theater manager. Uh, a moolah I spelt backwards. Oh. Isn't that awful? <laughs> it's crazy. What, yeah. what but but it was. It was money that. making. God, we made money with those things. Moolah. And, and that was 1950. They were still making money then. See, by 53, it just went right down the toilet. I mean, you didn't make, the, you know, the $1,000 a night stuff you were making. Yeah. And here I'm a kid, what am I, 18 years old, and I've got a company of five that I'm fronting right. with my own illusions and everything, a big illusion show. Amazing. God, I don't know how I, how I did it. The amazing thing. I, I, you know the what girls were know. older than me. They painted mustache on me to make me look older on the stage. You don't know how you did it. I, I saw a clip of you, and I don't know how you did it, where you do a pratfall. Yeah. And that was was that Red Skelton show or yeah that Skelton show where I did that oh my. yeah I was the second banana on that yeah, thing. don't yeah. you hurt yourself doing that well yes and no it <laughs> depends on how many times you're doing it and when and I have hurt myself oh, doing yeah. it yes yeah. but uh, no I, I I was trying to do the flip when I was a, a, a you know like in a junior high school and all the gymnastic stuff right. and I did the thing and I flattened out you know and I, and uh, when everybody was doing the running down the mats and doing the flip. And so I finally got where I could do the flip, running the flip. 
Yeah. So so uh, that night when we have the big crowd there, I go running down the thing. I go floop, and I hit, and I bounce, boom, boom, boom. The audience screamed and laughed and gave me applause. None of the other kids that did the flip got the applause. Wow. And, I, I, and, I, and I'm I, going, uh, oh. When I saw this, I, I, I said, oh, my God, he's doing Buster Keaton. Yes. That and was, I, couldn't, I couldn't believe it. Do we have a, do we have a, a clip of that here? Yeah, we, we yeah. Know, huh? Oh, yeah, you let's, can play it. Yeah. Let's roll that yeah. clip. Okay. <laughs> That's an amazing, Bev. I don't. You still do this, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I tell you, it's it's it was actually numbered, 108, uh, and and I, I learned the number from from Charlie Miller because he, Charlie Miller, the big heavy set. Fantastic card man. Right. Really was he wanted to be an acrobat. He wanted to do stunts. Oh, and wow. God love him when he when he was with me. That's all we did was talk about stunts and all that. And I know well, I'm gonna go back to the joke. Yes. Bev Bergron invented everything. Yeah. What are some of the things that you re that you Well the platform have? levitation. I didn't put the, the swivels in the thing where the girl can float you know, back and forth and around. Uh -huh. Johnny Daniels did that when he built the thing for us. And, and it was brilliant. Nani was the one, the first one that, that swung around and went around. Mark was busy on the phone talking. He didn't even bother to, when I'm yelling, Mark, look, look what Mon and Nani's doing, because she was controlling the thing with the upstage hand. The reason why I got, I built, designed a platform, back, I, I had an idea came to me in 1949, 1950, and at the University of Texas, and I, uh, Walter Blaney had shown me a cloud machine that made clouds go across the stage. Okay. The, the, he was, yeah, in, he was yeah. in the drama department at that right. time, University of Texas. And I was fascinated with that, and I wanted to do a levitation with a cloud machine going by, and I went, "Whoa, it'd be great!" But I didn't want to do like Willard, where we had to drill holes in the stage <laughs> to put the, the poor guy underneath the stage. And we had to go through concrete sometime. So I said, uh, uh, "I'm gonna. The only way to do it is put it on a platform." And that way, the thing, and then, then I said, "You know, we, with hydraulics and, and electric motors today, we have, we don't have to crank it anymore. Yeah. We can." put it in one of the legs and let it go up. And that's when we built a thing uh, on Alakazam. We made one for Mark. Wow. And uh, the, big, the big stove with the big cake out of it, the girl coming out of the cake was my idea on the thing. And there was an ABC, we call them XYZ boxes. And, and there was another way of loading that box up there, you know, that, right, yeah, right. instead of using a trap, and you understand, right. I'm trying to figure out ways not to use a trap door. Oh, okay. Because that's what we did on the Willard Show. We had to have a trap to get the girl up there. But I loaded it from the wings by using the, designing the boxes where you set them next to each other. And she came in from the wings at, at like a tunnel. Was this, you used a cannon? Was this the cannon? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And uh, use that principle. That principle was used by us. And then, then later on, uh, the, the stacking the uh, the boxes was my idea because uh, we were going to do uh, the uh, Okito uh, Cooley thing, which had been published in several books and in, in, in his own book, and also in I think Kajura's magazine. And uh, Bobby Towner, I mean Bobby Fenton, no, it was Bobby Towner. Uh, was going to be one of the Chinese uh, coolies. We was going to transfer from one cylinder to another and to change them into a tea box. And there was four boxes. And he said, you know, if, if this thing was that much bigger, we wouldn't have to fly me out of here in, in the tube coming out. He says, I could just crouch up in one thing. I says, yes, that's what I've been trying to tell everybody because I had a thing, the inner tube thing, where you blow up these inner tubes instead of big truck tires like uh, like uh, Willer, I mean, the Blackstone had. Right. And using the base, part of the base, and a fiberglass thing. I put this in the MUM back around 1964, 65. It's published back then. And that's what became the, uh, the stacking the boxes, that principle. Yeah. But before I take credit for that, now let's go way back. <laughs> what principle is that? It's the c costume trunk, who always declared it to the beard, but I understand it's really, um, oh my God, is it... Um, uh, maybe Le Leroy, uh, may maybe Leroy's instead of uh, the beard. See, they were both around at that time. 
Goldston went and credited it to De Beard, and that's what was. Uh, nobody knows who De Beard is, by the way. He was an unbelievable. He was an unbelievable performer. A Sad. lot of a lot of people today. <coughs> Performers, magical performers, mm -hmm. don't know anything about no, history, and they know. could find out just no. by looking at at the old magazines. Not 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 having to find the books, but just the old magazines yeah. going back in Ma, uh, M U M and into Linking Ring and all yeah. those. Uh, uh, what a source of, uh, yeah. of material. Yeah. We were talking about you producing. Um, Tapes and videos. Yes, right. I've, oh, let me get. Yeah, let me show you. That. Let me show it to you. Okay. Are these wait. all tapes and and DVDs yeah, this, you can these, buy? This, oh yes. Oh yes, you can buy these. Really? <laughs> Where are we? <laughs> 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 now, these, these are the videos. These are the videos. But uh, but everything is changing to DVD. Yes. I thought that was some kind of underwear when I first heard it. I didn't know. I used to wear them. Learn to be yes. a real. Clown. Oh yes. Learn to be a real clown. Is there a fake clown? That, my wife came up with that idea. Look. Rebo, oh, Rebo neat. nose, Rebo nose clowning. See, isn't that great? She oh, thought of that nose neat. clowning. Isn't that oh, great? Oh, nose clown. Nose A clowning. Physical Rebo meaning. nose yeah, clowning. Got it. Yeah, I got it on got DVD it. there too. See, and then we have, uh, then we have. Well, let me see. We'll find the other one. Oh, here it is. Bear Bergeron on tape, which is that version there. Right. On oh, DVD. so these are already yeah. on. Now. Are, are already moved to DVD. Then I have. Let me tell you what I also have. And I ladies have, and gentlemen, you know, not to be underdone. Step right up this gonna... way, yes. <laughs> I'm now known, you know, as, as a medicine show guy. That's another thing I got. Because with Disney, Wally Bo created that guy more like a medicine show right. type thing. Right. Now, luckily, when I was in the service, I saw a bunch of these med show guys work all around Wichita Falls, where station at Shepherd Air Force Base. Did they actually come in a, in a like a van or a truck? Well, no, no. Them? They 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 had a I mean a a, a old. Uh, Flatbed truck right. with uh, a stage built up to improvise lighting and lantern to the board in some places. I imagine they had generators like we used to have on Willard shows. They didn't have the stuff. People would also put their car lights on and they'd come out and sit on boxes that bring or chairs that fold out chairs that there's no no chairs provided for them. anyway I got involved with it so if the horseshoe would fit right in right and and, and the carpet bag which Wally Bogue right. gave to me uh, he created that character with the with a beautiful carpet bag Disney had made for me now I had my own made which is but I still got my old Disney one but I retired it but I've got a smaller and nicer looking one that for traveling goes right in, underneath the plane well used to go right underneath the seat of the plane not anymore. Do you have a DVD of that act? Yes, I do. Yes, it's uh, some of it is in right here, the the clowning and thing, and also in the horseshoe. Got the horseshoe show, but uh, this is this is the diamond horseshoe. This is one of a kind, man. Which I got four different shoots from videotape that people shot. Wow! And with the singers and the dancers, all the can can girls and. And me performing uh, the the act with the kids coming out of the audience, doing the balloon thing and, and all that, and you know I started the balloon with the, with the making animals out of one one balloon, and uh, so uh, get no thank you now. Now this one here is comedy and clowning. This is a bunch of stuff with Rebo on it, with Mark Wilson and Nani Darnell, and then then there's uh, stuff on me uh, other shows, a local television show, showing how I adapt. I became the professor Professor B where I became more of the medicine show man that comes into town and, and they keep wanting to know where my permit was and right, we, we, we right. worked the thing out. We did, I did about 25 of those and I got about five of them in there. When you... And I got Skeleton's Flip in there. Oh, and, really? Uh, Bev, we could go on for hours and hours and hours and hours, but uh, my technical advisors oh, on yes. stage are saying, we only can go another two or three hours. Yeah. Actually, we can only go another two or three minutes, but... Yeah. This is just an introductory into the life of Bev Bergeron. And uh, boy, I want to put something on the website yeah. or on the, on the DVD that says, hey guys, you want some of this stuff? Go to this address. Yeah. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Oh, sure. Sure, just go, to, just go to bevbergeron.com and you'll find it. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.